Hey, Jack here from Learn Guitar Tunes. Thank you so much for checking out this video, beginner guitar lesson. And I'm kind of calling this almost like your very first guitar lesson, especially if you're going to be doing it down the kind of YouTube route and kind of free lessons teaching yourself. It's really cool. So, this is kind of like the first lesson. And we're going to be really focusing on some easy stuff. And inside my video series here, I've got six videos as my beginner series on YouTube here. And each video is going to be kind of building on top of each other, one after the other, to the very end where you'll be able to learn a song nicely. And we're going to cover all kinds of things from a bit of music theory, or guitar tuning, how to tune your guitar, playing some chords, a little bit of strumming in there and some other real cool stuff, parts of the guitar, posture, sitting down, some of it you might want to kind of feel a bit boring, you might want to skip, but I promise you, you shouldn't really skip anything at these beginning stages, they might seem a bit boring, I know you've probably got massive enthusiasm where you just want to jump in and play your guitar like, oh I just want to play my guitar, that's cool, we'll be playing in literally a video or so away, don't worry you'll be playing your guitar, but it's really important that you also understand the parts of the guitar, what they do, how to hold and sit with your guitar, and all that kind of jazz. So we're going to be going into all of that as well. So I guess the first thing that you kind of need to know about your guitar, really, is you don't have to have a massive amount of musicality or music skill or be a complete genius or anything like that. Anyone can play the guitar. I teach people young, old. It, you know, it doesn't matter if you're 10, it doesn't matter if you're 70 or 80. It doesn't matter if you're into uh, rock music or if you're into folk music. A lot of people say, I've got short fingers, I've got fat hands, I've got too long hands, my hands aren't strong enough. It's absolutely just the mind telling you that you don't think you're good enough, and it's rubbish. Anyone can play the guitar. The thing that you need, and everybody needs when playing the guitar, is one thing. This is crucial. Enthusiasm. That's it. Enthusiasm. You've got to have the enthusiasm to be able to pick up your guitar every day and play it. Okay? Whether that's 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or maybe you've got half an hour if you're lucky. Pick up your guitar for at least 10-15 minutes and just have a play around every single day for like a month or two months. And then you're going to start seeing a massive improvement and you'll start feeling a lot more confident. It might, you might start off with a couple of chords and a bit of strumming here and there. Maybe you do, do some little picking or some slides. Maybe you might just want to have a little muck around. It might, it might be tuning your guitar for 10 minutes a day and putting it down and coming back. You'd be surprised how little you play and then you come back, put it down and come back again, how much you then kind of feel, oh wow, I'm actually pretty good today compared to yesterday. Each day is different, okay? Just because you're not doing it so great today and you've been playing for half an hour and things aren't quite clicking, perhaps that's telling you to put the guitar down, try again tomorrow or the next day, whatever it might be. Okay, so if you can't play every day, at least play every other day or so, as much as you can, for the next month or two. And of course, you know, use YouTube, my channel, um, you know, tons of skills, technique kind of videos, as well as learning favourite songs and all that kind of stuff. Just really have the enthusiasm to really want to play your guitar and just enjoy it and just hear different sounds and do different things or, or whatever it might be that you want to do, right? I started playing when I was 14 and I had like literally long hair down here. I was quite rocky and grungy, I was into Nirvana and Metallica and Guns N' Roses and all that kind of stuff. I was playing like power chords and thrashing it and over distortion, <laughs> all that amazing stuff. And I loved it, you know, don't get me wrong. And then of course, in the 90s, like real mid 90s, bands like Oasis and Blur started coming out and it was all very acoustic -y and strumming and chords and chord transitions and all this kind of stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, how do I do that? So, of course, with the times, things change. So you've got to adapt and change yourself, but that's cool, it's all about learning, it's all about having fun, you know, that's what these channels, my channel is here for, to help you. So, we're gonna crack on. I'm gonna stop talking, because I'm probably boring you to death. We are gonna start learning about the guitar, and we're gonna start off with our first, uh, our first kind of part of this video. So we're gonna do what is the parts of the guitar, okay? So I'm gonna do a couple of zooms here and there, and we're gonna go through the parts of the guitar. I'm going to probably do the first five, the main five or six parts of your guitar that you need to learn. Okay, I'm going to start this end. So you've got the body of the guitar. The body of the guitar is absolutely fundamental. You don't want to damage it in any way. If you damage the body of your guitar of acoustic, then it could alter the sound. So be really careful. Try and hang it on the wall perhaps, or put it in a bag, a gig bag, or a box at all times. Don't let it lean against the wall, it might fall over. Don't put it against the radiator, it will completely alter the sound. 
Don't put it in anything cold because it could crack the glue and the wood. So be careful where you put your guitar. Maintenance is key. So on the body of the guitar, you've got some elements going on here. First of all, you've got this bit here, it's black strip, which is called the bridge. Okay, now the bridge has pins going into the bridge. And they, those pins fastly secure one end of the strings, right? So your strings kind of, on an, let, on an acoustic, your strings kind of go in, like loosely, and then you put these pins in. Now I've actually got a video of how to, how to restring your guitar, so check that out later if you want to. But um, your pin's going to push, push in like that, and then they fastly secure, all right, the, uh, the string this end. And that's on the bridge, okay? There's like a little plastic strip as well, which is called the saddle. And the saddle basically arches the string up and then allows it to hover nicely, perfectly going across the body and then the sound hole, right? Because if without the saddle, without the bridge, the strings would be touching the body and it wouldn't make any sound, that'd be rubbish. So you've got the saddle, pretty important. Here you've got a pick guard or scratch guard, whichever you want to call it. Um, and that's obviously pretty obvious when you're strumming away, you don't want to scratch the body or damage it. So that's there to protect the guitar body as you're strumming. And you've got the sound hole on an acoustic. The sound hole, sometimes they're slightly different, sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're bigger. Um, sometimes you might have like a little thing going across it, that's called a pickup for anything that you may have an electric um, elements because you can then plug your acoustic into an amplifier. Mine doesn't have that, mine's just a normal acoustic. So you've got this sound hole. The sound hole is pretty important. As you strum your guitar, okay, the strings vibrate. And what happens is, as they vibrate, all of the, um, the vibration of the strings get sucked into the sound hole. They wish around the body of the guitar at a million trillion miles an hour in like split milliseconds. And then they come out as an actual sound, right? So with the vibrations of the strings, the sound hole, of the body, you then get amplifiers. The body essentially is like your speaker, right? It's like the guitar speaker, and it amplifies the sound. It's pretty cool. So then let's go carry on. So we're going to follow the strings, okay? So the strings then run along up here, which is called the neck, okay? This is your guitar neck, pretty important element. This is where your other hand is going to be. This is your fretting hand. This is your strumming or picking hand. It's your fretting hand. So going up the neck of your guitar, you've got these metal fret pins, okay? And the fret pins divide up the neck into boxes, as you can see. And these boxes is where you place your fingers down onto the string. So you're going to be pressing down on these boxes, okay? So you don't press on the metal pin, right? You don't press on those. You press in the box. You can press pretty much anywhere in the box, up against flush against the metal pins sometimes, depending on what you're playing. That'll come more apparent later. But when someone says to you, for example, you put your finger down onto the first fret, that there is your first fret. And that becomes your second fret, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Um, you also notice that your guitar, like mine, might have markers, these are little dots. Sometimes, the mark, it might not be a dot, it might be like a pattern, depending on the design of the guitar. So some guitar designs will put a pattern on there, just to make their guitar stand out from a standard guitar, like mine for example. Mine have got dots, that's very standard. Um, you'll also notice on the ridge of the neck here, there's more dots. Okay, and the dots are basically markers, right? So what the dots do, now if you notice mine by the way, mine doesn't have a dot on the third fret. Some of your guitar might do, other guitars do. But mine doesn't, it's just the design of this one. So the dots are markers. So when you're playing the guitar, you can essentially look down and know that that's the fifth fret, because I can see the dot there. That's then the seventh, the ninth. And then the double dots is always going to be 12, that marker's there. And that's all the markers are for, they're kind of almost like your roadmap to your, your guitar neck, just to so you know where you are. So within time you'll probably learn within absolute ease where you are, but in the beginning stages they're pretty useful, especially if you're doing some like licks and some riffs and some scales, they're pretty cool for that. So there's your markers, here is your 12th, okay, your 12th fret, now your 12th fret is your octave, okay? So if I was to press, if I was to say play first the thicker string, that's an E string, okay? So it's tuned into an E. If I was to press down on the same string but on the 12th fret, 
I'm playing an E note again. So E note, that's an open E note, that's an E. And then I press down again, that's an E again. Because the whole thing comes around in a big loop, but it's an octave higher. So it's a slightly higher pitch. Bing. Pretty cool, right? So there you go, that's the neck, very important. At the end of the neck here, there's like a plastic strip. Sometimes it could be like ivory or something like that, depending on what guitar you have, but normally these days it's plastic. And that there is called the nut. And the nut is really important. The nut keeps the strings really tight and allows the strings to hover over the neck, similar to what the saddle does as well here. So the nut is absolutely crucial. It's kind of just glued on the nut. Mine's actually quite loose, so whenever I change my strings, the nut sometimes falls off, so I have to kind of like put it back on and glue it. You'll find that sometimes with guitars. But anyway, that's your nut. Make sure your nut is nice and secure. That's very important because it keeps your strings hovering over the rest of the body, and also it keeps them tight to in, for going into the tuning pegs. The main bit here, which is always the bit where you're gonna have like the guitar like logo and things like that, this is called your head stock, okay? Again, different, some headstocks are different to others, different shapes, whatever, but normally on acoustics they're this shape like mine is, as you can see. And these are your tuning pegs, okay? So they essentially do what they say, I guess, they tune the guitar for you. So if I was to say on the thicker string, which is the string closest to me, thick E string, which is actually called your low E string, and I'll go through that in a minute, another, another lesson. But if I was to bring the tuning peg towards me, it toned down. Okay, and if I then tighten it away from me, it then tightens the string, loosens the string, tightens the string. And you twist these back and forth in order to tune the strings, okay, to their correct tuning. So they're the main kind of parts of your guitar. I guess the only other thing to notice is at the bottom of my guitar, I've got kind of like a button. It's called a strap button. Now, I don't have another strap button anywhere else on my guitar. Normally, you'd have a strap button there, and then you'd have either one here on the top bit, like there, okay, or sometimes behind the neck, here, right? So your guitar might have that. So what happens is, when you buy a strap, because if you want to be standing up and playing your guitar, when you buy a strap, you need, if you've got two strap buttons, you need a strap that goes into there with like a little hole, and the other end of the strap also has like a little slit hole that goes onto the other top strap button. Now if you've got a guitar like mine, and you don't have another strap button, you've only got the button there, the bottom, what you need to do is you need to get buy a strap that has a little slit hole that goes on the button, and the other end is like shoelaces, okay? Then the strap comes around there, and then you tie it underneath the strings on the neck. So essentially the strap kind of comes up here, goes over your shoulder background, and then onto the strap button, all right? Or if you have the other variation, it'll come from here, over your shoulder, around, and then it'll just kind of be pinned to that side of your guitar. I hope that will make sense. They're the parts of the guitar. Okay, lastly in this video, we're going to quickly go through how to hold your guitar, really, or how you should be sitting on your guitar. So you don't want to be slouched like this. You certainly don't want your guitar at an angle. A lot of guitar players, uh, especially beginning stages of learning to play the guitar, tend to have the guitar at an angle because, you know, you want to try and see your strings and your fretting hand. And that's kind of um, a kind of habit you want to get out of very quickly. You want to have your guitar at a nice angle, not completely upright like this, but certainly a slight angle. Um, you know, you want to be playing it nicely. So you've got, first of all, your as your strumming arm is coming up and down, you can strike the strings nicely. Okay. And then of course your fretting hand. Is nicely positioned as well. You don't want your arm to be leaning on anything because then you're going to be rigid and you're not going to, you know, get much movement out of your arm. You don't want this arm to be leaning on anything because then you're not going to get much out of it because you're going to be very rigid in your strumming technique and your wrist is going to be doing this as opposed to doing a lot of that. Um, so that's really crucial. Another thing is people tend to learn to play the guitar or play their guitar on like the end of their bed or a couch or something. Make sure there's no pillows or an arm of a couch. Yeah, I'm on a couch, but actually I'm kind of perched at the end of mine and the guitar is on the end of my lap, kind of um, situated uh, in the middle of my leg, I guess. It kind of leans against my body sometimes. And what I do, this is a really good tip actually, you want to balance the guitar out with both of your arms and your hand, actually your hand and your arm really. Um, and the reason why you want to do that 
is you don't want to rely too much on this hand to balance it, and you don't want to rely too much on this hand to balance it either, because this one's going to be doing some picking and some chord changing. This one's going to be doing some strumming. So what you've got to do is you've almost got to counterbalance cleverly, because I don't have it always resting against my chest or my body at all times. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So you want to kind of have it angled, and this arm here, essentially this part of my arm anyway, my guitar's got quite a big body, so mine's quite a bigger guitar. Your guitar might have a slightly smaller body, which is cool. That'd be great. So what you want to do is you've got your arm here, and you want to allow it to nicely strum, and as it's doing that, it's kind of balancing it so it doesn't pop down, because that's heavy in down there. This arm's strumming, but at the same time, it's nicely balancing, can you see, right? And at the same time, you want this hand to not balance it, but just to stop it from moving, because as you're strumming, it's naturally going to be moving a lot, right? So you want this hand to just nicely rest underneath with the thumb behind the neck, and you've got to be really get that fine-tuned balance between the two. It's good to just make sure that you have a little practice of that. So always make sure you're sitting on either a chair or on the edge of a sofa or on the edge of your bed. Make sure there's no pillows around, there's nothing like an armrest of the sofa, or, or make sure the chair doesn't have arms if you're using a wooden chair. Just make sure that you know there's nothing really around if you guitar to bang against or, or anything that's going to restrict your arms and your strumming and your picking hands from really being able to have more fluidity to play your guitar. So, I hope this first lesson has really helped you out. So in the next lesson, video number two for this beginner series here on YouTube, we're going to be going through the number system, crucial for you to learn. String numbers, string names, frets, pressing down, having a little exercise together, and uh, I think you can really enjoy lesson number two.